All right, now we are discussing about event-driven software architecture. So, what is event-driven software architecture? So, it's driven by events. The name speaks for itself. So, let's do an example. So, these are the components of event-driven system. There is an event. Of course, the event message, the producer, the channel, and the consumer. So we have five components, all right? So let's, for example, we are managing Tesla's order application. So, for example, a customer lands on Tesla's website and wants to order the Model X. Now, the customer now wants to place an order and they can place the order like so and define what they want, the performance, the long range plus, and then configure it according to their specification what you want, the exterior, interior, the autopilot, and then the payment and so on and so forth. So this is an event, right? So this would be the event producer, the publisher of an event message over a channel, for example, an order placement app. So we place an order and for example we pick one and we actually execute the order after we customize everything we want so an order has been placed right an event occur what is the event a new order for a tesla model x with the specific specification of everything the exterior interior autopilot and everything right so that is the event so what is the message oh somebody a customer just placed an order which is a tesla model x vehicle with this specification so there is the event message and all the details this is the event itself and then the message includes all the details okay all the details about the order now why is this different than um, regular um, architecture so with this it allows subscribers to this event to take action based on the event that just occurred so what event just occurred an order has been placed right so now this goes to Tesla's factory the assembly line to actually um, create the parts required to build this car, right? So what was the order? Tesla Model X. Now, because of that order, I'm going to go back here. The consumer is the factory assembly lines, for example. So the event bus is the order, um, order line. So Tesla Model X order just came in and all the consumer is the parts for this example. So for one Tesla Model X, we need four wheels, right? And then the headlights for the Tesla Model X and then the wing, uh, the Falcon wing door, two of those and the regular door, two of those and then the headlights, the, the seats, it's all starts to produce to, to, to get produced so the consumer of this order line is many other external applications so one order came in it starts producing all these parts to assemble one particular car based on the particular order what did the customer want oh this kind of wheel this kind of wheel and it has to be blue 
And then the assembly line checks. Do we have blue paint? Oh, we don't. Then order a new batch of blue paint for this, right? So that's how, um, how this architecture can help. So when, when a particular component changes, you know, this is uh, independent, it's decoupled. So if this uh, if codes change on this particular part, the producer, nothing changed on the consumer, right? It's decoupled. If you combine this into one whole large process, like an Apex class, one huge Apex class, well, it's just gonna be jumbled up. So if you need to change something, you need to change the whole class, it's just, way, way more painful to manage. This way you can um, compartment, compartment size, all these components. And then so you can change code here without affecting the, the consumer codes, right? So another example, somebody else, if I go back here, I go back or just close this guy. Somebody else wants to order the roadster, right? Or reserve the roadster, the roadster. And this is another order and it's not even available yet, right? So it has another um, subscriber event that tracks this. And then it says, oh, we have one more roadster order in Canada and we're just gonna collect the information for now. But once the vehicle becomes available, then we will notify the customer. So this order event bus will, will, will process every single event, right? Into this pipe. And then all the consumer that's connected or subscribed to this pipe will keep getting this notification every time an order came and can react or process data accordingly. So I hope that makes sense. So with that being said, we have five components, the event, the message itself, the producer, the channel, and the consumer, right? So keep that in mind. So example of when to use platform events, which I just described to you. And you can also um, process this for applications residing outside of the Salesforce platform. For example, when we place an order of the Tesla Model X here, and the wheels actually came from, you know, I don't know, Goodyear or some other wheel manufacturer. So whenever an order is placed, and then it checks on the inventory of the wheels. Do we have the, the rubbers? I mean, the rubbers, the, the tires, not the wheels, the tires. Oh, we are out of stock. And then it's gonna place an order of the tires from Goodyear or something else or somebody else. And then, you know, maybe it's residing outside of the Salesforce platform. Maybe Goodyear tires doesn't even use Salesforce. So, but their application can track changes of what happens in the Salesforce platform because they are also subscribed to it. You know, the tires, even the headlights maybe were made by an LED light manufacturer in China or somewhere, or they have um, tracking. They are subscribed to Tesla order mod order lines, the, the, the channel. And when Tesla's order line channel say, oh, we are out of stock for the headlights. It's gonna start ordering to the vendor and the vendor then process the order and start shipping it to Tesla's factory. So it's something like that, okay? Okay, so, and then you can also um, use a trigger to, to publish, to publish a Salesforce um, events using Apex trigger and then um, you can also subscribe to it. So you can define platform event objects, so to speak, from Salesforce, like you are defining Salesforce custom objects. So you define what field or what information you want to capture, 
and you find the type and then you can work with this field so to speak as the event notification and then you can work with that with that code okay so it's basically works the same as um, custom objects well not exactly but I mean the architecture so it has fields that you can work with but it's called um, instead of underscore underscore C it's it's called underscore underscore E for events uh, for the actual objects and this is the feature comparing generic event and platform event it has more advantages okay as you can see okay I hope that makes sense let's do the quiz together what are the components of an event based architecture so event producer consumer bus or channel is the same thing the event itself and the message what are some benefits of an event driven software architecture it's easier to manage and it's decoupled right so it enables near real-time communication simplifying communication by decoupling event producers from event consumers so if if one if you need to change um, on the ordering app here you want to add more options you want to do more stuff the subscribers code doesn't have to change it's totally separate the subscribers here right the consumer the code that actually is waiting to process the order it, you don't have to even touch it it's totally separate right so you just focus on coding on the app the order app here if you want to make modifications it won't interfere or affect the consumer so it's easier to maintain or manage right for which of these scenarios would you use platform events no I want to use it here publish and subscribe to events that are within or external to Salesforce what are some characteristics of a platform event record or a message it's not a record is an event or a message right it is similar but you cannot delete it and you cannot edit it so it is similar to as object record it's not viewable so you can't view it like a record in the UI and you can't edit it but no you cannot delete it so not that one object record no this is also wrong a it's a similar to as object record is not viewable and it cannot be edited it cannot be deleted so that's it all right i'll see you on the next video bada bing bada boom hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the salesforce app exchange and do yourself a favor like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word, watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom.